Let's face the facts. Most diets that people go on today fail to achieve a sustainable weight reduction. The biggest reason for this is a lack of understanding of how the brain regulates appetite. Now there's been a lot learned and a lot of research on this topic in the past few years. Still doctors and nutritionists are not applying this new science in the treatment of their patients. They're still teaching the myth of eat less and exercise more, which doesn't work for most people. Let's talk about what happens in your brain when you crave certain foods. Understanding this is critical to achieving healthy self-control over your eating behavior. First understand that food consumption, like sex, is hardwired into your brain as a pleasurable experience. It has to be because food energy is necessary for survival. It's high caloric content, so it's hardwired as very pleasurable. The brain's interest in sugar keeps infants interested and stimulates reflexes that are important for breastfeeding. In nature, sugar is very scarce, being present only in ripe fruit. This is not the case in our industrial food system, however. Today, the food and restaurant industry has created foods that are loaded with excessive quantities of not only sugar, but fat and salt as well. The right combination of these three ingredients can get you to want more and more sugar, fat, and salt. This type of food is hyper palatable. Let me explain. The term palatable means agreeable taste. To a food scientist, palatable means the ability to stimulate appetite. Hyperpalatable food goes far beyond agreeable taste. In fact, its stimulation of the appetite and its pleasure producing properties are so strong that it actually rewires your brain to keep you eating and craving certain foods. These types of foods work with the same physiological mechanisms that drug addictions work with to create dependency. It's very important to understand how the brain and appetite work. This understanding is key to learning how the right type of food can help regulate your appetite and prevent overeating. There are reward centers and circuitries in the brain. These areas provide the drive and motivation to pursue food and eating experiences. These same centers are working with other pleasurable experiences like those derived from drugs like cocaine and heroin. There are a few small areas of the brain that are called hedonic hotspots. These are the centers of pleasure. They are located in the nucleus accumbens and the ventral pallidum. You also have an area of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. This area is your executive control center. It allows for good decision making and helps you see the future consequences of your actions. Basically, if it is working well, it will keep you out of trouble but still allow you to be motivated towards positive experiences. Okay, so now we know about the brain areas that are involved. Now let's take a quick look at the brain chemicals that are involved. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that motivates our behavior and impels us towards seeking food. Dopamine lands on the brain cells that are part of the reward centers. This drives the wanting and craving part of the experience. Highly palatable foods cause a tremendous release of dopamine molecules in the brain. Heroin and cocaine also cause a tremendous release of dopamine molecules in the brain. There are opioid molecules in your brain as well. The word opioid, by the way, means like opium. And opium, which comes from poppy seeds, has morphine as one of its active ingredients. Heroin is synthesized from morphine, by the way. Opium produces euphoria and is a powerful pain reliever. The opioids, also known as endorphins, are chemicals produced in the brain that have rewarding effects similar to heroin and morphine. They produce the liking part of the eating experience. Highly palatable foods stimulate the opioid system, resulting in an intensely pleasurable experience. So in summary, we have brain regions that are involved with reward, pleasure, and impulse control. We also have brain chemicals. Dopamine generates the wanting and craving, and the opioids generate the liking and the intense pleasure. So the big question is how does this all affect our appetite? When we repeatedly eat hyperpalatable foods, a flood of dopamine and opioids go to the pleasure and reward centers. 
Dopamine keeps us seeking food and the opioids give us the pleasure. With chronic stimulation of these reward and pleasure centers, the effects diminish and tolerance sets in. Just like it does with drugs, you need more to get the same effect. This means the person will have to seek more stimulation to get the same amount of pleasure. Now the pizza is no longer satisfying. There has to be ice cream included for satisfaction to be obtained. Here is one other thing you must know about the entire situation. Repeated consumption of hyperpalatable foods creates a habit cycle that is initiated by cues. A cue is something in our environment that triggers a memory of a rewarding experience. It could be something as simple as driving by in a car past a restaurant where you ate your favorite dinner. While you are driving by the restaurant, you begin to imagine how the meal tasted, what it looked like, and even what it smelled like. When a cue captures our attention, it motivates us to act. Cues can gain power even if we are not consciously aware of them. Out of the blue, we may begin to think of our favorite candy bar, piece of cake, or chicken nuggets. We are aware that we are thinking of these foods, but we are not exactly sure why. So that's how cues can trigger the entire experience of overeating. It goes like this. A cue triggers a dopamine-fueled urge. Dopamine leads us to the reward. Eating food leads to opioid release and the pleasure. And the production of both dopamine and opioids stimulates further eating. When we do this repetitively, our eating behavior becomes a habit. We are following an eating script that has been written into the circuits of our brains. When we come home from work, we head straight to the refrigerator. We are not necessarily hungry. That's just what we have learned to do. So that's the story of how the brain controls appetite. Remember that these hyperpalatable foods are high in sugar, fat, salt, and calories. This leads to weight gain and a slew of lifestyle-related diseases such as diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. Brain physiology is the main reason that almost all diets fail to achieve any sustainable weight loss and behavior change. If you understand this, you can start to see the way out of this mess. You can't fix this problem with some silly little diet. It's not a matter of a lack of willpower either. What we need instead is actually detoxification and recovery. We need to get free from these addictive substances and learn to find pleasure in other foods and other areas of our lives. The desire for pleasure and reward is built into the circuitry of our brains. These sensations are central to life. They nourish and sustain our interest in things we need for survival. Diets that leave you feeling deprived will only magnify the loss of control you feel around food. A new way of eating will be sustainable when it generates a feeling of satisfaction. We can't sustain a change of behavior if it leaves us hungry, unhappy, angry, or resentful. With the right instruction and some patience, we can rewire our brains back to a healthy balance. We can break the cue, urge, reward, habit cycle with addictive foods and learn to obtain pleasure and reward from nourishing foods. Now let's talk about what we can do to help you make a sustainable change in your diet and your health. Now motivation is required, but many times your resources are overtaxed in your day-to-day -day life and you just don't have the time or the energy to learn the techniques and do what's necessary. We can help you with our group and individualized instruction programs. The Healthy Lifestyle Group New Jersey is a comprehensive approach to the problem. We have strategies that can help you with the behavioral, the cognitive, and the nutritional elements of dietary change. And all the changes are unique to your own physiology. All you have to do is follow the program and you'll get great results.